All right. In this episode, I'm going to talk about my favorite new integration between Premiere Pro CS 5.5 and the brand new Audition 5.5. Many times I'm working inside Premiere Pro. I love what I'm doing in video, but I need to add more things for the audio. I've got way more control, more power, more filters inside Adobe Audition. I want to be able to take the whole sequence and keep everything intact. I don't want to render out a stereo file and edit this. I need to be able to touch each individual clip and edit the way I want. Let's go over and have a look. Inside Premiere Pro CS 5.5, I'm going to expand this area down here. I'll hit my tilde key and you can see we've got quite a few audio tracks inside here. You can see lots of editing. And I said I don't want to compress that into a single stereo track. I want to have that all together in one. Well, with the sequence selected, and in Premiere Pro, if you just select the sequence, you see it's outlined. In the Edit menu, I can edit in Adobe Audition. Also notice grayed out because I don't have it installed. I could also still be going to Sound Booth. So if you're still loving Sound Booth, you can have that installed and running alongside Audition. But I'm going to use Adobe Audition. And if I had a clip selected, I would choose Clip. But in my case, I'm choosing Sequence. Click on it, and there it goes. So it's exporting out to Audition, and I can choose the location. I have a choice of the entire sequence or just the work area. I'm going to use the whole sequence. I can export out a video preview if I want. I can render the audio clip effects if I've got them. I can send the clip volume keyframe data and open in Audition. And I can also add audio handles inside here. So let's say that I had a five minute audio clip and really I just want that little piece. But in case I need to nudge something back and forth a little bit, I've got a little one inch or one second handle on, on each side that you can move it back and forth. And I'm working again today on a fantastic HP Z800. So I love the speed when I'm communicating back and forth. I've got two programs open at the same time. I'm really pushing all the cores inside here, all 16 cores, just to hum it. So that's going to make me happy. So I'll click OK. And it's going to, first of all, render a video preview. Like I said, if you don't have to have this if all you're worried about is um, editing the audio. But chances are you're going to want to render out a video preview because everything is relative. That audio is relative to the video. So if you're going to be adding things, let's say you're going to Adobe Audition to add things like a Foley or sound effects, well then of course you'll need to uh, be looking at the video. So you render it out, it drops in a file into Audition that has complete video uh, playback. And then when it's finished doing the video file, it's going to export out every single one of those clips into an individual uh, track that I can have full editability. Here we are exporting out the audio data. You can see it's just zooming out through this Z800. And let's finally launch into Adobe Audition CS 5.5. You'll notice the user interface is a little bit like Sound Booth, but some things are different. Um, let me just move my mouse over into the left hand side. I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse, and you can see very easily I can scroll up all those tracks so I can see everything. And you can notice over on the right hand side, every single one of my individual tracks has made it inside here. So now I've got full control to edit this the way I want. I've got a video window inside here that I can drag up and, and preview the, the video. So now I'm locked into sync between the two of these and I'm communicating. So your next question might be, well, how do I go back out of Adobe Audition CS 5.5 out to Premiere Pro CS 5.5? Well, that's built right in. We can uh, take this right from here and we can go to the multi-track, export to Premiere Pro directly from here. And I get a dialog box asking me, how do I want to export this? If I want to mix this down, I can. I can go right to a mono, stereo, or a 5.1 file, or I can export each track as a stem. And, and that's probably what most people will want to do. You still keep it separate from Premiere Pro into Audition and back. You can set the sample rate. So for most times, it's going to be a 4800, the location and the file name. And you notice it's creating an XML file. So it's not a giant bloated file. It's just a little bit of data that goes back to uh, Premiere Pro to open that up. So that's a communication back and forth between 
Premier Pro CS55 and Adobe Audition CS55. But what about other kinds of uh, communication? Well, we can export this out. Let me go to my file menu, export. Notice that we can export out directly as OMF. A um, couple of versions there and a few features that uh, mean we fully have uh, OMF uh, covered and Final Cut XML interchange format. So let me just quickly show you OMF. We've got controls in here uh, of uh, how this is going to be export out. And uh, now when you open this up into OMF type applications, you'll be set and ready to go. Uh, the last thing I want to make mention, which is really useful inside here, um, if you're used to editing in something like a digital audio workstation. Um, in Premiere Pro, you might be adding uh, some of these effects to clips, and we've got clip effects inside here, so I could select an individual clip and drop any one of the really powerful and super fast uh, effects on a clip, or I can grab a track effect and drop in any of these wonderful effects on a track. And notice that we support VST and audio units on the Mac. We've got presets that you can drop inside here. The bottom line is this. When you're stuck in the middle of your video edit and you're having trouble and you need to get some more power and richness, uh, that's what Adobe Audition CS55 is here for. It's part of uh, Creative Suite, communicates directly back and forth, and when you have the absolute power and speed of the HP Z800 underneath, then you're not going to be waiting for any rendering at all. Thank you.